Kia ora, thank you. Uh, I don't know if I can be quite as quick as Peter. That was pretty darn exceptional. I mean, I know we had the discussion at the last meeting around just that yeah. difference in reporting, so you d don't feel like you've got to rush through it because it is quite important for everyone to, yeah, sure. to okay. capture. All right, well, I'll just talk to a few notes that I've got here. Um, I always like to start with a few highlights, and I think um, just noting this month, some really good progress still on Te Kaha, which you've heard about earlier, and also Matatiki progressing really well. Um, the coastal pathway completed stage one and, and uh, was opened up for the future stages to follow. And a couple from the community and citizens area, the Citizens War Memorial, obviously available uh, yesterday for the ANZAC um, service, and the Jubilee Clock Tower too, um, with some conservation and maintenance work that's been recently completed. Um, so just talking to the report, um, listening to the feedback last time and, and trying to make a little bit clearer the differences between the numbers that we report. So at a um, capital program total level, we include Takaha and Paraka Ori in those um, figures. So I've separated that table out. And we talk about the project manager's forecast in that table. Um, what that means is there's about 130 project managers who work across um, roughly 1,000 different projects. And they all individually make an assessment of what their forecast is required for the financial year. So that's the number that you see there. In the second table, um, often we'll talk about the CCC core capital um, project numbers, and that's when we strip out the, so the big one-offs that can skew things. We strip out Takaha and Parakori in that instance. So on this one, we've, we've got the project managers aggregated forecast, the same way as, in, as, as done in the top table. We also, we also take a view from the PMO's perspective. So we, we take an independent sort of assessment of where we think it's the capital expenditure is going to land in the financial year. And we're able to do that because we sort of step back from all the individual projects and we take, if you like, a sort of a more probability-based assessment. We look at past performance, we look at the current trends and the spend to date in the year, and we're able to make... Um, a, a different and, and um, perhaps better informed figure that, that helps finance and treasury in planning for the year. So I don't want you to think that one's right and one's wrong. That's not what they're meant to be. They're just two different approaches. And, and PMO, if you like, gets a, a different perspective by taking a, a higher level and sort of helicopter view uh, on those figures. So I've pulled that out and explained it a little bit differently in this month's report. Is that okay? No, thank you. I mean, that, that's really useful from um, from my point of view. I guess the question will be, as we approach year-end, uh, do you foresee that 390 changing again? I mean, I, I know you've kind of held, held the line on it, and it does make sense when you compare it to the project managers, but do you envisage any change in, in sort of practical terms as we get to that point? Uh, I would say within, we're pretty confident in it. As, you, as you've noted, we've We've made that assessment since about September last year, yep. and we do assess it every month. We look across each service area and then in the whole. Um, so we'd still say 390. I kind of think probably plus or minus a few percent. Okay. Um, and often that last month, as we've talked about before, can have some one-off and, and catch-up sort of figures that can um, be quite hard to predict if, for example, a... Um, say an infrastructure provision agreement gets settled in that month that can kind of bump things up a, a bit quickly. Yeah. Um, but within a few percent, I think we'll still be oh, that, landing on really 390 good. and that will ultimately, <laughs> yeah. in the course of time, inform our carry forward position. And I guess that, that is the, the beauty of it is in theory we'll have, um, I'm not saying we didn't have confidence before, but we'll have a lot of confidence as we approach year end actually and planning for next year. Yeah. So that's that's really useful. Yeah. And they do, as... <laughs> As we all enjoy the benefit of time, they they will converge ultimately, and you know on the last day they'll they'll be the same. Yeah, yeah. no, no, <laughs> good, good yeah. scope. Yeah. So I've got Tyler and then Aaron. Kia ora, thanks for the report. Uh, just fill in it, possibly just to take it offline. I just wanted to just raise Fadinui Road again to see where we're at with that. Um, potentially, it's been marked out. Um, and the other one was around, and this was a one that I had from the Dean's Ave precinct, around the crossing that was supposed to be there on Dean's Ave. There's supposed to be some sort of crossing. It might be under CREF. Um, just taking that offline. I don't need the yep. answer now. Cool. So Thanks. you're okay, Lynette, to Yep, I can do those offline. Yep. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Aaron. And then Yami. Yep. Yeah, uh, just around the um, the kind of, it always, well, it feels like a struggle to get to the 390 to get to the spin. Mm. Should there be warnings in that with our current uh, annual plan that we're going into and our planning we're doing? Like what are the learnings from that that we should be like 
when we start throwing out the lolly scramble next in the coming weeks, should what should we be seriously thinking about? Yeah, I mean that's a good question. We have talked about that quite a lot in the development of the draft annual plan, and, and we emphasise the um, historical delivery, yep. and, and you know that sort of um, uh, historical threshold, if you want to call it that, around about the four hundred billion. So we we often pegged it to that in the discussions that we've had. We've ended up with a bit more than that, as you know, yep. um, and that comes with some risks. But we also feel that it's achievable in the in the current environment with the escalation and inflationary pressures that we've got in front of us as well. So, so it's, yeah, it's definitely a measure of. Um, so you're saying we don't get there based on delivering more; we just get there on prices going up. And uh, that's not the intention. No, it's the difference. If we've got 460 in the draft annual plan at the moment, relative to the 400 odd mark or 390, that's not all considered to be inflationary pressure. That would be a lift in um, deliverability as well, us doing more. So, but how achievable is that if we struggle now and every previous year? Uh, it's demandingly achievable, I would, I would say. Yeah, it's got to be a, it's got to be a target that we uh, have a bit of a stretch in, and I think it provides that. It's not unrealistic. And does every council spend and government departments as much as they can not drive inflation? Sorry, could you say? Probably so not. If you've got every council yeah. pushing the envelope on how much they can deliver, so buying in as much as they can of yeah. services and goods, yeah. does that not drive inflation? It's pro he probably can't answer well, on behalf of government. I guess it does. That's yeah. yeah. <laughs> market no, it's forces, it's a, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's... Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, if you're a big driver of the market forces, I, it's just it's two and two normally equal four. Yeah. That's a, the matter for governors to take a view, not for officers mm. to comment on. Yeah, cool. They're ratepayers too. <laughs> okay. as, as we all are. Right, so we've got, uh, thanks, Aaron. We've got Yanni and then Mark. Yeah, thanks. I was just wondering, how can we get visibility of each of the craft projects in regards to spend versus budget for each one and what one each stage is at? The information that we get just has a cluster and it would appear that the same amount of money has been spent over the past six months or six months ago as has been spent today. So... I was really interested in the so so understanding. you've asked a question yeah and here's something we prepared earlier is it Lynette oh, oh <laughs> you go if you're ready to go yeah, I'm right okay yeah. um so at the last finance and performance meeting we discussed um, how we'd agreed as staff to report back to council and councillors and the community boards and that was through six monthly updates via briefings to the community boards at the community boards. Um, and quarterly written updates. We also noted all the way through that as we progress, the projects will be coming back via the community boards for approvals through normal project processes. And any ex external reporting that we put out will be circulated to yourselves and the community boards as well. So that's reporting to Treasury and other departments. Um, as we discussed at the last meeting, um, we are we were going through we're going through the six monthly updates to the community boards. We've since uh, we've completed four of those briefings in the last one with your boarders tomorrow night, and um, at those briefings we've met, we've been talking through in you know full and frank conversation around the issues, the risks. Um, and the plan that we've got is staff to work through those and deliver these projects and where we're at with all of them. And uh, through the chair, I think we agreed at the last meeting, if there were needed to be more up reporting out of that, we would adapt it following those briefings. So far, the briefings have been um, very well received and there's been really good conversation with the community board. So, so after the next briefing yeah. tomorrow, if we need to change how we report, then yeah. we can agree with so that. So what, what Lynette and I have agreed... Uh, is after the after you've had your briefings, we'll have a chat about and with Leah uh, about what the best way to uh, adjust that if is needed. So I, we'll get through the briefing tomorrow with your board, and then we'll um, we'll have a conversation around the reporting for the next month. Well, like because I've already looked at the briefing that have gone to other boards, and I can tell you right now that at a governance level, it gives me no understanding right. of progress. <laughs> can or we budget. just get through the briefing tomorrow? But isn't it a matter for F and P, not the community boards? 
like how we understand unless how I just said that to. silently which I don't think I did we're having a conversation after you've had your briefing tomorrow which is going to report on how we adopt and change the reporting right so in terms of the watch list that we've got in front of us today is it still the staff's view that everything should be greenlit in regards to CRAF yes and in, in line with the program that was reported to this committee last November. Okay, Mark. Hey, thank you. And apologies for my voice today. It's uh, just about departed me. <coughs> but the question for Lynette. Um, <laughs> sorry to put you on the spot. Okay. But I'm keen to catch up at some stage around Horsell Junction Road extension and where that's sitting and um, try and work through uh, if there's ways we can you know, progress that with Kiwi Rail. So my understanding is there's a, there's a response had gone back by the officer's CA to say that we've got a briefing coming up on that yep. with all of you. Right. Yeah. And Very soon. And there will be a report to council. Okay, cool. Um, main thing being that I've actually met with a few Kiwi Rail people and reached out to some and I'm not getting the same feelings back from them as to why there's problems. So wondering whether we can have a catch up offline, I guess. To, um, yeah, we try can have a catch up offline. That'll be good. Thank you. Okay, I'm happy to move this. Aaron's happy to second it. Is there any discussion? Yanni. Yeah, I'm just increasingly concerned that there's no visibility of the craft progress. Um, when we were briefed in July 2020, we were told that there was an expedited procurement process, a streamlined approvals process, checking the scope of work required on each street, how documentation can be expedited. Um, and I'm, I'm just concerned that, um, like I've literally heard nothing for six months now and the community board approved the majority of the projects the 12th of April. So that's over a year ago. And yet there doesn't seem to have been any measurable progress that I can see in terms of our reporting. I guess the reason for being concerned is that in our report as well, there's also made mention of the increased cost, the difficulty of getting contractors and the ability to actually procure. And so the longer we leave getting progress on the craft, the bigger the risk is that those projects, the current cost estimates um, are not deliverable because of the significant increase in cost now attached to what was proposed. So I'm deeply concerned that we're not seeing the tangible progress on the ground in terms of the projects, the craft projects that we've agreed as community boards uh, in terms of delivery. The staff actually put together a very good report to the community boards with all the different things that needed to happen. And I can tell you now from looking at the community board briefings that, that have already happened, the information um, in those reports is not adequate to understand what the key milestones are and what the key financial uh, spend is and so you know I, I mean I'm looking forward to the briefing tomorrow I still don't even have the briefing information that's going to the board tomorrow even though this was supposed to be done in March originally I was told we would be briefed so I am concerned I appreciate that these reports these watch lists are so good but they're only as good as the information that comes underneath them and I do think with the craft ones I would welcome the chair working through at the next meeting a better way in which we can monitor progress so that we can have confidence that these things are being delivered. Melanie. Um, specifically on CRAF, um, I have a confidence on this being delivered. Um, we had our briefing, we were the first board, and we had um, staff come to us, and not everything is written in that um, presentation. Um, but they could speak to it, and the whole point of bringing it to us was so that we could discuss it. So um, I guess the key thing will be for any boards that haven't had their presentation yet is to make sure you come to a decision as a board quickly in your briefing and don't let it delay any further. Okay, um, just... Um, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> Can, is, it all, is, it, is it all right if I have this go to this meeting with yourself and Yanni after the briefing tomorrow or whenever you have it we're in debate at the moment we can talk about that after yeah, yeah but on, Yanni's not coming to the meeting it's just we're just doing it through FMP so yeah let's have, well, let's that, have that, okay. that discussion yeah yeah because so I too we're in am, debate at the moment okay well I'm talking about craft now <laughs> I, I I too am 
quite concerned that we're, we seem to be having more meetings than we are spending the money. How, out of the 40 million that we had and put to one side, I don't really know how many dollars we've spent, how much is less. So I'm, I'm not particularly happy with the amount of speed that, that I know we've got to go through a process and all that sort of thing, but we seem to have been having meetings and briefings on top of each other, and I'd like to see a peg go on the ground somewhere um, and spin it as fast as we can. So I guess just the only thing from my point of view, firstly, thank you for the report, Andrew, and thanks for updating it in terms of um, those forecasts. I think they're really useful for anyone outside of here also looking in terms of you know, what the PMs expect versus what our sort of independent PMO uh, kind, of, kind of forecasts. Um, that's that's really useful. Just, I mean, it's really unfortunate sometimes that these capital reports become dominated by a really small aspect of the capital budget. 